So, we're still here with Bruce. Bruce still, he's not talking to me right now. He seems very upset that I put him in that last video and sorry, buddy. I'm really sorry. You know, he seems like he's really hung up on it, if you know what I mean. So, in today's episode of the Aaron Icky Leslie interview, uh, we talk a lot about giving up the dream. And the dream that most of us have when we start FPV is to make it a career. Aaron had that chance. He had the chance to make FPV his career. And ultimately, he decided to give it up. But you're going to have to listen to him to understand why and to understand what that means to him. And here's a hint. It goes back to some of the values that we talked about in the last video. Anyways, I'll see you guys soon. So I, f I feel like I talk to, you know, I talk to a lot of pilots, right? And we all FPV pilots. And we all get into this thing where it's like, this is magical. I can do things with these drones that no one will ever do in person. Um, just because of physics, right? Yeah. And um, it it captures people's soul in a way that is, I've seen very few things do it. Um, uh, you know, there's, I mean, there's certainly, there's illicit substances and, and drugs and alcohol <laughs> and things like that that can like addict you, right? But, you know, you talk about FPV being addicting, it's not truly addicting, but it does something to you. And yeah. so many pilots that I've talked to have elucidated or given me this idea that underneath everything that they're doing is a dream. And so I'm curious if, did you, did you give the dream up and pick it back up or did you just give it up or did you find a new dream? Like, well, it, like I said, it's hard to put into words, but what I, what I'm what I'm doing what I think I'm doing is accepting the fact that the dream's still there you know it's like yeah I wanted to okay so let me back up this I can put into words because I've said this before my goal with actually pushing content and getting better at flying and doing all these things was to be able to get out there and have the means to meet people and go places and enjoy at FPV life mm -hmm. it's very selfish of me because I wanted to be the big shot, not to be the big shot, be able to be in the places with those people. I wanted to go hang with Stingy. I want to go hang with you. And I made and everything else, but I needed the means to do that. So I knew the only way to do that was to push myself and to sacrifice and become bigger. And, you know, ramp example of that. That was just, I can't even begin to express how grateful I am for that opportunity, but I was a guest on the list for Rampage. My name was right next to Mr. Steele and, and you know, Wild Willie and all these other people. And you can't, I mean, can you imagine what that felt like? Like I woke up that day saying, really, this is it. You know, I made it. And by the time I left and I went home, I said, well, I got what I wanted, but can I keep really making these sacrifices to make a trip every now and then to, to go and do this? And I realized it really almost isn't worth it because you, when you start to talk to all these people that are doing these things, you know, all the, the big shots and the pros, like they do, they work hard, long to do this and they really enjoy what they do, but it takes a certain kind of person. And I realized I took a step back, took a break and realized that if it happens, it happens. But like I said, I, I can't sacrifice any more than what I already have. I just, I drew the line in the sand and just called it. It's like, if I get to take a trip over to Florida to hang out with Rotor Riot and with the crew, cool. If I get to take a trip to IO or meet so-and-so, that's awesome. But I'm not going to go out of my way to, to wake up every day and have, you know, write that on my wall and check it as, as a goal because it, it just sours everything that I do. And that's me personally. That's, that's, that's not necessarily, I wouldn't say a flaw, but that's just who I am. I know my limits and I know that I can't ha set this goal and uh, attack it viciously and not have it to be toxic for me because I want, FPV is so pure and I only want to put in pureness. I don't, don't want to 
you know, make it toxic and poison it with these intentions and goals that are not pure, if that makes sense. It, like I said, it's really hard to put into words, but it's just how I, I think, feel, I, you know? I, well, and I, I think you're, <clears throat> I think you are, you're hitting around a topic that is, um, interesting to me in a lot of ways. So I'm a dad. Yeah. Um, I've got three kids. Uh, they are 10, almost 12 and 13. Yeah. And I chased a dream a long time ago, um, to become a software engineer for a mobile company. And part of that, I was traveling out to, I, I lived here in Virginia beach and part of it, I, I, I was traveling once a month to San Francisco in New York and you know, all these London, all these great places. And for, wow. for a year, maybe two, it was, it was amazing. It was like, wow, this, I'm like, I'm living this dream. And then slowly it started to dawn on me that like, yeah, I was, I was living a dream. Um, but like my kids were growing up at home and yeah. I wasn't seeing it. And, you know, I would come home and my wife would be like, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but it's easier when you're gone because the kids would just get used to me not being there. And I would come home and yeah. disrupt the rhythm of the family. Um, how much do you think your family plays into the, it's not even that you're giving up the dream. It's just that the dream is changing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, so uh, you know that I did DR1. I was gone for a month and a half, and it was hard uh, on my family, my wife and my, my baby. She's two now. Um, and so we talked, and she, my wife was okay with it, and she knew that this was what I had been searching for and working so hard for this whole time. And it finally happened, and nobody gets these kind of opportunities, so I had to take it. And... You know, I was homesick. It was not much, you know, because we were working hard and we were doing everything. But it was when I came back and settled down and I realized I can't do this life. It's not for me. It's not for someone that – and it, this is hard to say without offending someone that, that does what they do. But I can't – I love my family and my life I've too much to be on months at a time, all the time for me you know it's not for them i could make money doing anything you know it's like do i need to make money being in europe and all over the dang place you know being on tv and doing all this stuff no i did it for me and at the end of the day i just had to make that choice and and realize that it's just not for me like i i would have more fun in europe with my family than i did you know being on tv and hanging out with drone guys you know, it's right. just when you really right. compare the two and it's classic and it's cheesy. It's like, yeah, you know, but it is what it is, man. People have different lives. And that was my thing. I had to realize that everybody is on a different storyline. Like not everybody can drive around the United States in a van hitting skate parks and, you know, bandos and stuff all the time. Like that gets tiring. Yeah, it's fun. But, you know. They don't have a family. They don't have connections and all these things. And at the end of the day, when you take a step back and realize these people that have all these things that you really want, you think they have in the world, they may want exactly what you have. You know, so at the end of the day, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, they're doing the same thing and it's going to be too late for them. And I'll have a beautiful family and we'll be going doing all these things and I'll be able to tell my daughter all the cool things that I did and that she can do anything if she puts her mind to it. But there are sacrifices and there are, you know, things that you have to watch out for. Yeah. But like I said, it's hard to say that without offending someone because people make different life choices and they make different sacrifices. And, and until they really wake up and see and, and make the decision on what's worth it, then that's all that you can do is just – let them go. I don't, I, I, I don't disagree. Um, I know for me, you know, when I, when I picked up FPV, I, I looked real hard to see if I could make it a career. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, there were, there were several points at which I realized number one, 
I'm just not a good enough natural pilot, right? <laughs> like I, I can, I can fly and I can not crash, but the amount of effort it takes me to fly and not crash is like, you know, guys like you or, you know, Camden, uh, the drib or yeah. you know, so many of the other top pilots, they, they probably can, you know, do with one hand what it takes me, like, you know, all of my concentration <laughs> to, to, two thumbs. Um, I have flown with one hand before, actually. That'd be a good video. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. That I'm would be. It. I had to. I had to adjust my goggles, and I had my my transmitter sitting on my knee, and I was doing throttle, and then like the pitch and and roll with my, with my other hand like this. That's awesome. It was interesting. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah, but like I I I eventually came to the same realization. It's like you know, listen, hey, dude, you've you've got a family. And you've already given up a lot of time with your family. Um, and, uh, it, it, you know, I, I put down traveling about two years ago. Um, I still travel a little bit, but, um, you know, now I don't, I don't, I, I don't feel like a globe trotter anymore. Right. Yeah. And, uh, that's a, that's a nice feeling for me. Like it's, it's, it's very strange and it's very strange when you, attain what you think is like the best thing ever yeah and then realize that had hey, I'd, I'd rather be at home yeah it's and a, it's it's like sacrilege to uh, 90 percent of these fpv people because i've had i've had conversations with people like dude why are you complaining like i would literally kill to be able to do what you do to be on dr1 to be a rotor hype train pilot to be you know to be able and invited to the to the rampage do all these things and i try and i try to tell them it's like look man it, it's not everything at the end of the day like these things just they mean diff different things to different people like so once i've done it yeah it was cool and i don't take it for granted and i don't think that other people are lesser because they didn't do it or whatever but i just feel like like you said man people just we're all different some people can do it some people can't and some people get to do it, and then some people get to do it, but then don't. And you can't really, you can't really hate on them for that. One thing, you know, as a guy with a family, um, and I know for me, I'm I'm this I'm I'm the sole breadwinner. Um, it it becomes very important, especially you know when it's just you and your wife. That's one thing, but when you start adding kids, paying the bills becomes super important. Yeah. Um, you know, with your experience with DR1 and just probably with the people that you've talked to in the FPV community in general, you know, how hard is it for FPV to pay the bills? It doesn't. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the short answer. I, I've, I've been around, I've talked, you know, more than, more than some and FP, FPV is not a money pot, man. Rotor Riot, like people complain about Rotor Riot being, you know, in it for the money, in it for the business, and not about the community. My argument, real short and simple, you have to be about the business to be about the community because it, you can't have one without the other, unfortunately. Um, but they're not coming home with crazy amounts of money. Um, at the end of the day, it's going to be up to really hustling hard. Bardwell's a good example. Uh, he, he hustles. He does his affiliates and all these other things, Patreon, all this stuff. FPV as a core income, it almost doesn't exist. It's 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 from really hustling really hard, engaging with your audience, and having multiple streams of revenue. Um, businesses just it, it's pretty much like, you know, the equivalent of like a, a really good, like hair. What do you what's what the, what what's the the name for like a hair place? Like a, like a hair, hair salon like a really good hair salon in like a town where like people go to it and they get their hair cut all the time, you know, and thousands of customers a month, but it's, you know, they're not Walmart, man. Like we're not there. I don't think we ever will be there. Think, take, look at skateboarding. For example, skateboarding still today, people, millions, kajillions of people skateboard and watch skateboard videos and do all this stuff. But we saw it from nothing. We saw the rise, the plateau, the X games, and then where is it today? 
So I think we need to really realize it's like, look, we're going to make a little bit of money. We need to make money to be able to even exist and have a community and do these things together and be able to travel and put on events. But I don't think we're ever going to be, you know, motocross. We're going to be filming motocross, which is going to be awesome, but we're not going to be doing the motocross. We're not going to have, you know, billions of dollars, millions of dollars to put on events. Um, is it a goal to work towards? Am I am I being negative? No, I just I have a, a slightly realist outlook, and I think that you know you need to to set your goals accordingly and and attack them and approach them, and then make new ones once you realize there's other opportunities and and bigger heights that you can go to. At, for the time being, money's just not there. Um, I I saw the um uh, uh, a recent figure. If you manage to win the DRL um, tryout, yeah, I think they guaranteed you a salary of seventy five thousand dollars a year. Yeah, and that's pretty good. That, but that... it depends on where you live. Um, yes. Yeah. And so, what's the easiest I mean, way? It, it, I, I will put it this way. That's good for a single dude. Yeah. Um. I've... It's a lot of money because I'm, I don't want to put down anybody that makes no, less I, than no, that. No, 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 I, no, make, no. I make less than that. But it just it, – is that before taxes? Like is that – you say salary. I think, but that's, like, I, think that's the to, I think that's the total salary. Yeah. So like when I went to DR1, I made close to $6,000 for a month and a half, which is great you know, for yeah. just a little gig. But that was – I had a 1099. Like that was not – that was not right. tax. That was well, tax-free. Well, I, I don't know – I don't know if they're 1099ing those guys or if they're if they're actual employees. But um, yeah, man, and that that I think right there is like the pinnacle of FPV. But is is it going to be around forever? Are you going to have a seventy something thousand dollar check for the rest of your life? No. But I'm going to have a fifty or sixty thousand dollar check for the rest of my life, and my daughter's going to have food, and she's going to know where her daddy's at, you know. And it's just a life choice that I made. Did I want to be on DR1? More than anything I've ever wanted in my life, yeah. You know, when when Paul Nurkala, Nurk, said that I was one of his favorite content creators ever and, like, was all over all my stuff. And he I, he was an idol to me because he came from nothing, worked behind the scenes in DRL, and then now he's a pilot and all this stuff, telling me every day that I can do it and I know I can do it and then realize, okay, I can do it. And that's enough for me. You know, I know I can do it. And to me, that's mm -hmm. enough. You know, I don't have to prove it to the world. I, I don't need an extra, you know, ten or fifteen thousand dollars a year, to be away from home all the time, and to to do something that I love so much that it becomes a job, and that I kind of stop to love it. Which is why we're here in the first place. Is just love and enjoy it. Yeah. Not to hustle and, all the time. And just just to backtrack a little bit, I did not mean to infer that seventy five thousand dollars a year was not a good salary. Oh yeah. Um, you can you can make a good living in a lot of places on that. Um, I know here where I am, the cost of living is pretty high, and so I mean I I remember you know, it, 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 the early years when, you know, my kids were young and and money was tight, and I I remember living on a similar salary at that point, and yeah, it was uh it, it was you know I remember thinking, gosh, you know, man, if we just had yeah you know, if we just had an extra hundred bucks a month, that'd be great. Um, seventy five so, a year for a sole income, that's not a lot. The, so yeah, as, right. as as a sole income, that's like that's nothing. That's that's especially with multiple kids and family and mortgage right. and everything. That's that's gone like that. Yeah, doesn't matter yeah. where you live. You yeah. can be you know it doesn't matter. So yeah. yeah, but I mean it is what it is, man. Don't my takeaway is just just stop trying to. If you if you're really dead set on it, if you if you know you can do it, like Alex Vanover, he started as a kid, he he flew all the time, he got support from his family, he knew he could do it, he didn't have to make immense sacrifices and all these things, and he went for it and he's got it, awesome. But like, if you're willing to make the sacrifices and you're gonna be okay with that, you know, years from now, and you know you can do it, do it. But just take a step back sometimes and 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 realize that it's not all about the fame, it's not all about the money. Once you've traveled. A hand three or four times 
it gets back and forth to fast. the airport. Dude, I'm once you've traveled, you know, a, a handful of times and gone to fly somewhere and meet these people and back and forth and back and forth to the airport, you're good. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Watch the drib. Yeah. Look at watch one of his videos when he's at the airport. Dude looks bad. Like he looks yeah. like tired, man. I'm sorry, Drib. I love you, but like you can, you can FPV's wearing you down, man, and we know it. You know, yeah. it, pe people rag on these guys about you know all these things, but they work hard and they're doing it just to survive and just to have content and and products and things for you. So you know, you know. You it's funny you say that. I just released a uh, so this will this will come out in a week or so, um, but I just released uh, the first of a few episodes with Latrib is an interview, yeah. and dude, it was eleven at night, and we were filming the interview, and he was still at work. Yeah, and I I, I mean there was somebody that commented on the thread. They were like, hey. Um, you know, Drib, Drib looks a little bit tired, you know, has he, has he been partying too hard? Something like that. And I responded, I was like, no, dude, it's 11 at night and the dude is still at work and he's talking yeah. to me about this drama filled episode that they've been going through. Yeah. And, um, I, I mean, there's, there's definitely like, I, I do not for any, any moment discount the hard work that it goes into being a top pilot. Once um, you once you're once you're woke and you really realize what's going on, you stop envying it in, entirely. Because I used to envy all of that, everything that they have. Once you realize what it really takes, you more you respect it more than you envy it, and you realize you know they're doing something. They're doing something else. They are a part of something bigger to make everything work, and they're making these sacrifices so that we can enjoy this FPV life. It's not something that every single person in the FPV community can strive for just by uploading videos to Facebook and YouTube all the time. It right. needs to be something that we enjoy as a community and sharing and doing all these things, not about becoming some pinnacle of stress and anxiety. Right. Yeah. And I, you know, it, ha having talked to Chad, having talked to, um, Drew, I've talked to, uh, Troy, I talked to Lexi, um, the, uh, the amount of effort that goes into what each of them does is pretty intense. Bruce and I want to thank you for watching that episode. I have to say that that episode gave me a lot of perspective and it also gave me a lot of respect for Aaron. Uh, I really appreciate his candor and I appreciate the fact that we were able to really touch on things like money and what it takes to survive in this industry. It's not easy. And money doesn't flow like water. It's hard. Now, to give you a little insight into the next bit, we completely nerd out. I mean, we nerd out so hard that most of you won't even be interested, but we nerd out on cameras, and I think you're really gonna like it. Anyways, Bruce and I, We'll see you later. As a matter of fact, this will probably be the last time that you see Bruce. Bruce, say goodbye. <sighs> He's still really angry. I'm sorry, Bruce. Anyways, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.